Caroline here from Spirit of Nature Art and welcome to another art video tutorial. And I'm back in my lovely little altered book that I'm working on here. You will have seen some of the videos for these pages so far. Uh, and today you can see I've got this lovely woodpecker image that has been uh, inspired by woodpecker returning to our garden and living in our silver birch tree. Uh, and you can see what I'm doing here is just pulling out some of the pages in the book. Um, I'm gonna, I'm adding stuff in by doing this collage. So I need to create space in that book to allow the, uh, the book to absorb that without breaking the spine. So, uh, so yeah, I was absolutely delighted. We haven't had a woodpecker in our garden for years. And I went out the other morning and heard, first of all, the woodpecker and then saw the woodpecker flying into our silver birch and I was just so excited that I came straight back in and looked through my illustrated book of birds, found this beautiful image which lends itself perfectly to this book which is all about these cut out pages. So I fussy cut it, I have used my, uh, my craft knife to cut out some of the more delicate areas and now I'm just putting a layer of gesso on this page before I get things stuck down. I have stuck some of these pages together, so I think I've stuck three together. Um, particularly doing these cutout pages, I want the pages to be um, really thick and sturdy. When I cut away, I want that to be able to hold. So I've got my gesso one, I've cut my woodpecker out, I'm just going around with some black archival ink there and edging all those kind of little white edges from where I've cut it out. Um, uh, so that we haven't got that stark whiteness. Sticking it on now with just some matte gel medium and just putting that on the page in a way that gives me enough space to, uh, to blend the tree into the page on the left uh, and to cut out around the woodpecker, which is what I'm going to do next. So I put a cutting mat behind so that I'm not cutting in to the rest of the book. I'm just using my craft knife just to go around and cut as close to the edge of my woodpecker as I can. And please remember this is sped up, so I am taking a lot more time doing this cutting. When you're using a sharp blade, please take your time. You see I'm moving the book around as well to help me get the best angle, the easiest angle for that cut. So now just really sort of coming in and doing the, the tricky fiddly bit <laughs> around the head here. But first of all, I just wanna take out the rest of that page. So taking up to the top, and then I'm gonna come back in and do this little bit in the middle here. because I want to be able to peek through and see what's on the page behind. going back in with that archival ink and my blending tool and just edging again so that where I've cut that book page uh, it feels like it's, it's it doesn't feel like I've just stuck the woodpecker on top I'm really happy with that so now I'm turning my attention to the pages behind where I want to uh, represent that beautiful silver birch tree. It's literally my favorite tree in the garden. So I'm just sketching out a, uh, you know, a kind of artistic version of my silver birch with my pencil there. And I'm gonna go back over uh, in a moment with my um, Micron pen. Uh, I chose the Micron pen because it is waterproof. So when I start adding paint to this page, that pen isn't going to run. Uh, and not only going back over the branches here that I sketched out with the pencil, but I'm also going to go in and start adding some leaves as well. And you can really see the effectiveness of choosing that image of the woodpecker. When I go through my, uh, my illustrated books and I'm looking for images, I'm looking for ones that really lend themselves well to being cut out and standing out from the page. Uh, and this image was, was perfect because even on the other side of the page without the image there, you can see that it's a woodpecker. 
So yeah, I'm going in now with my Micron pen, adding in those details, adding in some little leaves, really wanting to bring this idea of my silver birch to life. I want to start adding some colour onto this page now, but I don't want the, the, the idea of this being a, an altered book to completely disappear. Uh, I could just use straightforward acrylic paint, but that will block out everything on the background of the page, all those beautiful text. So I'm using a gesso, a white gesso here, that I've just added a very small amount of green uh, acrylic paint to, to give it the colour. The other reason I've chosen gesso, not just because it has that slightly transparent nature to it, but also I really wanted that chalky finish. So that was just the feel that I wanted for this page. So I'm not going to make you watch me colour in all of this, <laughs> but I'm just using a really fine brush to be able to go in and paint the background uh, that lovely chalky, translucent colour that still gives us that sense of the book page behind it, but at the same time gives us that sense of context of where the tree is outside in nature. It's like, you know, by the time you get to this, you're literally just, it's like one of those painting by numbers. I'm just filling in the gaps. Here comes Roscoe. This is Roscoe, one of our cats, who also loves me doing this painting because I clearly get so relaxed. He, he literally gets mesmerized by me being mesmerized. So he'll come and he'll be uh, a little bit curious and then literally he'll just sit and just get that really little far away look in his eyes as he's watching me in that really calm way. So a little bit of therapy for him, as long as his feet and his tail don't end up in the paint, then generally we're okay. <laughs> the rest of my book there just with a, an insert from a cereal package. Just really easy to be able to wrap around the book so that I can really get in and do the work that I want to do without getting it everywhere. So this has had Roscoe's seal of approval now. I have done a second coat on it, uh, so it's not quite as translucent as, as the first coat, but still we get that sense of the book behind it. And I'm just using white Posca pen to go in and highlight those leaves. doing similar with the trunk and the branch. I'm using the same white gesso, but I've just added a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of black. Literally, I dipped a cocktail stick in my black gesso uh, and mixed it in with the white there because I want that same chalky finish, that same slightly translucent uh, effect to really kind of bring the, the uh, silver to the silver birch. Giving that a good dry now so that I can turn my attention back to this front page here. And I want to get some detail and some texture over on that left hand side. So I have got one of the, uh, the back plies of a napkin. So normally on a napkin you have the patterned one on the front and then you have two blanks on the back. So peeling off the back of uh, a napkin and I'm just using my, I think that's charcoal archival ink and stamping this beautiful leaf stamp 
onto this napkin. I'm just placing uh, one of the pages I tore out from the book underneath so I can see where it's gonna sit on the page when I glue it on. Now I'm using archival ink here because it is waterproof when it's dry, because I'm about to use gel medium to glue this on to the page. Now the reason I'm using the napkin and not just stamping straight onto the page is because I want all of that yummy texture from the napkin. So as I use my gel medium here, and again, I'm just going to protect the rest of my book whilst I do that. When I use the gel, it's going to uh, help the, the, that kind of white of the napkin disappear. So that will become much more translucent, but also I'll be able to move around that uh, napkin a little bit so that I can create some texture, create some creases in there, because that's really going to help me bring that page to life. So I'm just putting some matte gel on the page first and laying the napkin over the top, and then I'm going back over the napkin with the matte gel too. Now I have watered this down a little bit just to make it a little bit easier to move around as well. And you can see I'm kind of actively Kind of trying to keep some of those creases in there. dry now because if I try and handle this whilst it's wet it's just going to tear and turn into kind of soggy um, paper mache. So giving it a good dry uh, with my heat gun so that I can, you know, I haven't got the patience to sit and wait for it to dry. So um, I'm going to dry it with my heat gun so I can speed the process along. And once that's dry I'm going to go in and I'm going to tear the edges just because, again, it gives me a bit more texture. I could just as easily go in with a pair of scissors and cut it, but I just wanted that texture. And you can see where I kind of allowed that napkin just to kind of go over onto the other page a little bit. And I'm gonna use some of the leftover bits uh, that I've just torn off to add uh, some more onto that side as well, just to marry the two pages up uh, and to really, again, get that idea, extend that texture that has been painted on to the tree um, with the woodpecker there. I want to try and kind of bring that uh, really onto the, uh, onto the rest of the page as well. So I'm just doing the same technique basically, matte gel, some of the, um, the napkin, allowing it to kind of crease up a little bit as I'm sticking it on, going over the, the top again with the matte gel. And now I want to bring out some of that texture that I have created with that napkin. Now it's dry, I'm going with the blending tool and my Distress Ink, and I'm just really gently rubbing it over the top. I, I just want to catch the bits of napkin that are higher. So it's a really a very light touch because I don't want to just, you know, kind of put a solid color all across the whole page. I'm just really gently rubbing it over the top to highlight those bits of texture that are there. So the ink is catching on the creases. I'm also taking the opportunity to uh, edge the pages with that ink as well. I think that's hickory smoke. Uh, so it's a very pale gray. So I've not used a really dark color. I just want to get that effect that there is texture here, like the bark on those beautiful silver birches. I'm just you're going straight in with the ink pad because it is such a pale colour. I can go straight in with that ink pad and help with the edging, just trying to get some uh, some colour on the edge there, as well as using that blending tool. And again, just trying to pick up more texture by rubbing the. The ink pad over the top. I would no way would I try and do this with a blanket, a black ink pad or a really dark ink pad. But because this this hickory smoke one is is quite pale, 
I can get away with doing that uh, and, and not making too much of a mess on the page. But I really wanted the edges to be a lot darker. So I am now going back in with the black archival ink and the same blending tool and just really darkening up those edges now. Makes quite a difference. And this is the bit I'm afraid where I forgot to press record on the camera. Uh, I used my little stamp uh, set to write out this quote here uh, on a bit of card where I think I'd already sprayed some Distress Oxide. Now that just uh, happened to be that same nice kind of grey colour. So I used that to stamp my phrase on. I could stick that on the page but it felt like something was missing. I really wanted to bring out that uh, more subtle leaf um, uh, at the bottom of the page there. Now I've got the phrase at the top, I needed to balance that out at the bottom. So I'm going back in with that black archival ink and that same leaf stamp to get uh, a more popping, uh, I guess, uh, leaf impression and also to take that across the page too didn't feel enough though. <laughs> so you can see now I'm going in again um, and using uh, the torn out pages that I took out at the beginning and stamping onto there, tearing that out, just not cutting it but just tearing around it so I get a really nice texture on the torn edges and placing that in the same place I liked where I had put the stamp. I just wanted it to really stand out. I needed something that was strong enough to stand out against the woodpecker and the sentiment that I'd put in. So it was just a sort of happy accident as I'd cleaned the stamp on a bit of that paper to the side that I thought, actually, I quite like that. And it also brings back in that element of this being a book, the text from it too. So just again, protecting the rest of the book while I get the messy, sticky glue out uh, and sticking those pages with the leaf onto the page there. And this really does now start to feel a lot more balanced. It just felt, that bottom half of the page just felt really empty um, once I'd put the quote on there. So these, also like I said, having that third leaf that I'm just putting on now just pulls these two pages together. It feels more like one page now rather than two separate pages. Once that's dry, just going in and cutting off the excess along the bottom there. Still want those leaves to pop out a bit more though. <laughs> so I am going in with my Inktense watercolour pencils uh, and just putting a very kind of drawing a very faint line around it. And I'm being extra careful because I have used Distress Ink in the background, which is water activated. And in order for me to activate the Intense pencil, I also need to use water, but I don't want to disturb the work that I've done with the Distress Ink in the background. So I'm just using a really tiny little bit of water on a very fine brush just to activate that Intense pencil to, um, uh, to edge those leaves. And again, just help them pop from the page a little bit more. That's starting to feel how I was wanting it to feel now. It kind of feels like it's part of the spread now. It feels like uh, this is part of the, because the woodpecker's got a really strong outline. The leaves are now starting to feel like they've got a strong outline. Uh, and uh, you know, part of that page, it just brings everything together. I feel a lot happier. I think I can settle with how the bottom part of that page is looking. Uh, and I'm just going in and doing the same thing with that Inktense pencil just around the quote there to help that settle into the page too. going around the original bit of collage paper there where I tore that from the book doing the same thing and it feels very like silver birch kind of bark now 
uh, that going in with that dark colour to shade around the edge as well. Really, I feel like I want to go out and hug my silver perch as I'm sat watching this. I'm really pleased with how that turned out. And that is the finished piece. Uh, I, I absolutely love this. I love picking up and flipping the page over. You'll see here I did put a few little bits of extra stamping on this page here. Uh, but yeah, look how the woodpecker stands out. It's just wonderful. Mm -hmm.